this video is for anyone who hasn't done heat embossing before. Maybe you've started to buy the tools and the products for heat embossing, but haven't quite got the hang of it. Maybe you're completely obsessed by the look of it, but haven't reached that far yet. So um, I'm going to talk you through the basic tools you need, some extras as well that will just help you along the way, and a few different techniques that you can do with heat embossing too, to get the most out of your embossing powders that you've purchased. So the first thing we're going to do is basic heat embossing, and that's with a stamp. So I'm going to do it onto some black cardstock. Now going through the tools that I've got around me, besides some plain cardstock or paper that you may need, is first of all your inks, because you need something for the embossing powders to stick to. There are specific inks that are made perfectly for embossing, and very often these will say embossing ink on them. They are usually a clear ink and they're extremely sticky, so they stay wet for a very long time. So these are the perfect ones to purchase if you are new to embossing. But you may find that you've got some at home already that will work. Something like a Versafine will stay wet just long enough to hold the powder, as will, uh, my favourite is chalk ink, so Versa Magic here will work as well. Uh, something like a Distress ink, for example, this is water-based, this tends to dry ever so quickly on paper, so they're not usually super suitable unless you do work very very quickly. So then we've got our embossing powders and we've got a range here of different colours and such different brands as well. They all work in very much the same way but you will find throughout the brands that you will have different sizes of granules. So some will be fine or ultra fine. So this one says on here super fine detail. That's perfect if you're doing something with a lot of detail in there and you really want to pick that out. Some of them will have larger chunks of embossing powder so they're better for covering larger areas. Now a few additional extras for you, you may like to use when you're embossing. Um, I use a tray for collecting my embossing powder. This is one that's primarily used for beading, but it's perfect for just putting my powder in once I've shaken it off of my project and then I can easily tip it back into my pot. A small paintbrush is really handy just for dusting off any excess specks of powder that you don't want before heat. Um, setting and then I've also got an anti-static bag. Now these are purposely made for heat embossing, they reduce any static, any little greasy spots or damp spots on your paper before you add your powder and your ink and things so that basically cleans your paper and gives you a nice blank canvas. Now the last tool which is an essential and you absolutely need is a heat gun. There's lots of different brands on the market um, they very often come in the same sort of style. Sometimes they have one speed, sometimes they have two, it doesn't matter. Um, they will all work in the same way. They're not the same as a hairdryer. Now a hairdryer will pump out a lot of air very, very quickly and will only get quite warm. This will get extremely hot, but the airflow will be much gentler. So the air coming out of this is slower and that means it's not going to blow the powder away. It's going to allow it to stay in place. So we'll be using this and it's quite noisy when we do turn turn it on, but it does the job. Let's start first of all by stamping and embossing. This is the traditional way that a heat embossing is intended on being used. So I've got my black cardstock, as you can see there, inside my stamping platform. I'm going to use my anti-static bag, and it's just a small bag of powder. And if you dab it, sometimes you can see a little bit of powder come out, sometimes hardly at all. But I, you just swipe that over the surface where you're going to be embossing. And like I say, that will reduce any static, and that will also remove any small greasy marks maybe from your fingertips. Then we need to ink up our stamp and I'm going to use the embossing ink for this so it will be clear you won't be able to see the detail of the stamp very well on the black cardstock but once we add that powder it is beautiful. So just dabbing that all over the stamp in the same way you would if you were stamping in colour. So just pressing that all over my paper. I do like to make sure that I am stamping onto a smooth piece of cardstock or paper rather than um, a textured piece because of course if you've got texture there that will affect the way it stamps. So now bringing in my clean up tool, so my tray here, and I'm going to sprinkle over this lovely shimmery gold embossing powder. It's not a glitter and a glitter will not work in the same way. A glitter may grip onto the ink that you've got there, but once you apply the heat it will just get blown away. So the embossing powder is created to actually melt, so they're a little bit like dried up little flakes of, um, I suppose they're a bit like plastic 
but once you apply it, as you can see, to your stamp, that sticks in all the right places. Now I'm going to use my paintbrush just a tiny amount just to remove a little piece of powder that's here. I'm just going to gently brush that away, a tap on the paper and that will all come away and that's a lovely clean image now. So I'll tidy this up in a moment. So the next thing I want to do is heat set that before the ink dries. So popping that to the side and that's why it's handy to have a tray. We're going to bring in the heat tool now. Starting on the first setting and I wouldn't place the heat onto the powder until you've given it a few seconds to warm up. So I'll hold it away from my project for about five to 10 seconds until I'm sure that the heat is coming out as hot as it's going to get and then I carefully bring in my paper. Now there's two ways of melting the powder. You can go from above and melt it and that's absolutely fine, but some people find if your paper is thin enough or your cardstock is thin enough that you can go from underneath and I will do it this way. It's a little bit slower, but you get a nicer effect because the heat is distributed more evenly so you get a nice smooth finish to the top of the powder. So let's start heating this up. There we can see our powder has turned into what looked like a molten metal and then set. This is now already dry and it's the paper's a little bit warm but effectively it's set. It's cool enough for you to now work with. That is also a resist because the powder would resist any water-based inks and paints and things like that. So you can then play with adding extra texture and color to that. So that's effectively the simple way of using embossing powders. But let me show you a couple of other techniques. I've adhered a piece of cardstock here to the reverse of a stencil. And I'm going to stencil through my embossing ink into the gaps here. So you can use all of your stencils and your masks that you have at home. And I'm just going to brush that very gently into there. Now I'm using a, an ink blending brush, but you can of course use other things. You can actually apply the, the ink pad directly to the stencil if you like to, but I find you do get quite a lot of wasted ink this way. But we'll do it for now, there you go. And what we'll do is take brush and we'll just brush off the excess from the stencil onto the cardstock to make sure we've got lots and lots of ink where we need it. So as I say that's that ink is going to remain sticky for quite a long time so we don't need to hurry for this next stage. I'm going to remove the tape carefully that I've got on the back of the stencil there. And now I'm going to apply some colour but I'm not going to apply the colour in just one shade. I'm going to do it in two parts. So I've got a lovely vivid red here and I'm going to apply that just across half of the paper in a diagonal line there. And then gently grab the corner where I don't think I've got any ink and tip that off. We've got a lovely design there. Now you could set this and just leave it with that lovely blended line if you want to but I'm going to add a second colour. And there we have a beautiful ombre effect. So let's clean this up and then heat set that and see what it looks like. Now if I just lift that up for you, hopefully you can see we've got a lovely shine on this. So it's got a glossy effect to it is really beautiful it makes it look almost as if it's a plastic or vinyl finish so another technique for you is simply to use clear embossing powder and you may be wondering why would you do that well there's two reasons so let me just show you on this blue cardstock so again I'm using my clear embossing ink here 
just going to pop it onto some smooth cardstock. And this time, rather than adding a colour, I'm going to add a clear powder. So these look like a white powder. They will say clear on the tub or on the packet. When, once you heat this, it will set to clear and it will look like glass. This is brilliant for adding a watermark style effect. So as you see, we've got this clear at the moment. And let's just heat set this. So now we have a lovely clear effect. So this looks as if it's got a watermark on it, it's got like a clear plastic coating over the top. And this also means if you want to bring in your coloured inks onto different coloured papers, you can apply the clear glaze over the top and that will dry them instantly so you can then work over the top. Another advantage to using clear powder is to of course then go in with water-based inks because they will be resisted by the plastic sort of finish to the embossing powder. So here the white web sort of design has been gone over with clear powder on a white paper and then I've taken some watercolour inks and just painted over the top and of course all of the embossing powder that's set there has resisted the ink so that makes for a beautiful effect and one last thing you can be doing with embossing powder and this is one of my favorite things to do is to emboss onto parchment or vellum it gives a really beautiful delicate look and there aren't many papers or cardstocks that you actually can't emboss onto so i hope you have lots of fun using your embossing powders um, hopefully that's encouraged you to get them out and have a play but if you did like this video please do go along and subscribe to my channel so i can bring you lots more tutorials and tips like these